Good morning. It's Thursday, the 20th of February. You're tuned in to our 10 a.m. newscast coming to you from Ali Dang's news center in Seoul. Let's take a look at what's making the headlines. Some 80 South Koreans are traveling to the North Mountain going on this Thursday morning to reunite with their war divided family members for the first time in more than 60 years. Ukraine's President Viktor Yanukovych announces a truce with the opposition after violent clashes with riot police killed at least 26 people. He also promises to start direct talks with opposition leaders. Plus, Korea's figure skating queen Kim Yuna inches closer to back-to-back -to -back Olympic golds after placing first in the women's short programme with a score of 74.92. South and North Korea will resume reunions of war-torn families on this Thursday for the first time in more than three years. Dozens of elderly South Koreans boarded buses a couple of hours ago, headed to the venue for the reunions, the Mount Gumgang Resort in North Korea. Moon Gong Young reports. 83-year-old Tang Chun will meet his brother on Thursday for the first time in 63 years, a sibling he thought was dead until a few years ago. They'll reunite for the first time since the Korean War tore apart their family. This will be the first and the last time for me to meet my brother. 63 years have passed already. Considering how long I have to live, this will be my only chance. He is one of the 82 elderly South Koreans who gather in a resort near the eastern port city of Sokju on Wednesday, one day before they'll be crossing the heavily fortified border only 50 kilometers away into North Korea. It will be the first reunion in more than three years for the peninsula's divided families. The South Korean Red Cross had initially arranged meetings for 83 South Koreans, but one had to bow out due to health problems. This has only highlighted the fact that time is running out for the peninsula's divided families and the chief of the South Korean Red Cross is fully aware. Originally, 83 separated family members were supposed to come, but one had health issues, so the total number now stands at 82. 26 of them are over the age of 90. It has been three years and four months since the last encounter with our northern delegates, and this will provide us the opportunity to meet face to face and share our opinions on a humanitarian basis. Earlier in the day, the reunion participants went through health checkups conducted by the medical staff that will be traveling with them to North Korea and received a brief lecture on the do's and don'ts while meeting with their relatives in North Korea. At about 8 a.m. Thursday morning, the 82 South Koreans and their families will board a bus and leave for the cross-border transit office in Kosong, which is about an hour and a half drive from here, and then cross into North Korea at 10 a.m. Korea time. The reunion set to begin at 3 in the afternoon will be bittersweet as the chances of any of these divided family members meeting again are slim, if not none. Moon Gonyoung, Arirang News, Sokcho. And we'll be bringing you coverage of those reunions throughout the day, of course, right here on Arirang News. Now, with these inter-Korean family reunions and a recent UN panel report accusing North Korea of crimes against humanity, greater attention has been drawn towards the human rights situation inside the reclusive regime. And a South Korean parliamentary committee on Wednesday discussed pending bills related to protecting the rights of the North Korean people. Our Jimmy Young Gil reports. Lawmakers from the ruling Senate Party and the main opposition Democratic Party showed clear differences over pending North Korean human rights bills at Wednesday's Foreign Affairs and Unification Committee. The Senate Party's full leader, Choi kyung hwan said passage should come sooner rather than later. The North Korean human rights bill should be passed as soon as possible. The UN has already urged North Korea to stop violating people's rights and for China to stop the repatriation of North Korean refugees. We should be the ones at the forefront. The two parties have each submitted five bills since 2005, calling for measures that would improve the lives of the North Korean people. 
This Henry Party's proposals have mainly called for documenting the human rights situation in North Korea, supporting human rights activities and helping groups that aid North Korean defectors. The DP's proposals have focused more on supporting cooperation between the South and North and providing humanitarian aid. While Democratic Party lawmaker Chung chung ne welcomed the discussions on the bills, he said the timing was inappropriate. Both parties should go ahead and talk about the pending bills, but legislating them may affect North Korea's attitude towards South Korea, especially at a time when we are going ahead with the family reunions and relations with North Korea are improving. Political analysts say the opposition party's stance reflects concerns that a hardline approach to the North Korean human rights situation could anger Pyongyang and worsen relations. Although the parliamentary committee lawmakers did not agree on legislating the bills just yet, they did agree to proceed with fine-tuning them. The U.S. and Japan adopted legislation on the North Korean human rights situation in 2004 and 2006, respectively. Kim young Arirang News. And North Korea has detained yet another foreigner, this time an Australian missionary. The wife of 75-year-old John Short told Reuters that he was arrested by Pyongyang's Public Security Bureau on Sunday. Mr Short had reportedly been questioned about handing out religious pamphlets printed in Korean. His family found out about the detention only after another member of the group returned to China on Tuesday. Uh, Australia, which does not have diplomatic relations with North Korea, is using its embassy right here in Seoul and the Swedish embassy in Pyongyang to look into the case. Uh, Pyongyang has been holding Korean-American missionary Kenneth Bay in detention for more than one year now on charges he was trying to overthrow the regime. A top Chinese official who visited Pyongyang this week is scheduled to arrive in Seoul later on this Thursday, raising speculation that progress is being made in international efforts to denuclearize North Korea. An official at the South's foreign ministry confirmed Chinese vice foreign minister Ryu John Min's three-day visit to Seoul until Saturday, where he will meet with a number of officials here, including the chief negotiator to the six party nuclear talks. Ryu's trip to Pyongyang has been watched very closely, especially since it came after the top diplomats of Beijing and Washington uh, recently said they exchanged proposal on ways to spur the North to disarm its nuclear program. And whatever was discussed between the two ministers there was likely relayed to Pyongyang by Ryu, and he is expected to give details of his North Korea trip during his stay in Seoul. Now, with the housing market here in South Korea sputtering along, the land ministry has some ideas about how to get it back on track. Officials laid out their plans in a status report to the president on Wednesday. Kim Jeon reports. During a policy briefing on Wednesday, the Ministry of Land called for revitalizing the housing market by easing restrictions. The pitch included a number of measures. Regarding the reconstruction of houses, the Land Ministry said there is a need to scale back on some of the policies imposed back in 2006 that were put into place to quell housing speculation. That could include abolishing a policy that requires homeowners to pay back some of the profits gained from rising house prices after renovation limiting a household to buying just one house in some areas of the Seoul metropolitan area would also no longer apply. The ministry also wants to ease the eligibility for government-backed mortgage loans to include more home buyers. First-time buyers are currently only eligible for loans that have interest rates in the 1% range. But with the change, those who have not owned a house for five years would be eligible as well. The ministry aims to make public rental housing available to 90,000 households this year and to 500,000 households by the year 2017. The set of measures is being introduced in part to counter soaring housing rental prices that have risen since 2008. The goal is to ease the imbalance between supply 
high end demand in Cheonsei, a rental system unique to Korea that requires one large lump sum deposit. The task of boosting the nation's faltering housing market has been a major issue for economic policymakers, as more than half of Korean households' assets are in real estate. And because of that, many fear that the ailing housing market could have a negative impact on the nation's consumption, which makes up a majority of the nation's gross domestic product. Kim ji on Arirang News. Korea's export-driven economy is still being driven by its six major industries, while growth in other sectors has remained relatively flat in recent years. Our Connie Kim reports. Korean exports are still driven by the six industries that power the country's economy, while growth in other industries has remained stagnant. Local market researcher CEO Score said Wednesday the combined overseas sales of 133 companies from 2011 through the third quarter of 2013 was more than 421 billion U.S. dollars. Of the total, 94 percent of the company's overseas sales came from Korea's six main export industries, IT and electronics, automobiles, construction, petrochemicals, shipbuilding and steel. During the same period, however, the telecommunications, pharmaceutical and transportation industries saw their overseas sales remain flat. CEO score representative Park Jugun said the six major industries are crucial to the export-driven Korean economy and added that companies need to invest more to stay competitive. Exports of IT products and automobiles are expected to continue to grow, while it may take the shipbuilding industry, which is especially highly dependent on global economic trends, more time to recover. Samsung Group had the highest proportion of overseas sales, which represented more than 70 percent of its total sales from 2011 to 2013, followed by LG and Kumo Aijiana. Connie Kim, Arirang News. A consortium of Korean engineering firms has won a contract worth about six billion U.S. dollars to build an oil refinery in Iraq. The joint venture led by Hyundai Engineering and Construction is made up of four builders, including GS E&C and SK E&C. The refinery will be built in Kabala, some 120 kilometers southwest of the capital Baghdad, with construction expected to take around four and a half years. The multi-billion dollar order is the single largest industrial plant project won by Korean firms. Now, the historical and territorial differences that divide Korea and Japan are very clear to those at the center. But to the outside world, the disputes can be confusing and the emotions underestimated. To give the international community a better understanding of where Korea is coming from, the government and civic groups are attempting to improve Korea's brand image. Gwon Soa reports. Hundreds of people, mainly students, gathered Wednesday at the opening of the exhibition Brand Image Up, hosted by Yonhap News Agency and the Voluntary Agency Network of Korea, or VANK. The so-called cyber diplomatic organization uses its time promoting the country and improving Korea's brand image globally. They focus on reporting the truth about issues like Japan's claims to Korea's Tokto Island, the naming of the East Sea and the women forced into sexual slavery by the Japanese military during World War II. As, as I'm Korean, I want other people, not even South Korean, but other foreigners to know what is right about South Korea. And that's what I'm volunteering for. I believe that informing foreigners about our country is the best way to improve Korea's status. Park Gite, the founder of VANK, which has 12,000 members, says his dream to give the world a better understanding of Korea began with a pen pal letter. One of Park's foreign friends told him that maps abroad identify Korea's East Sea as the Sea of Japan and refer to Korea's Tokdo Island by what the Japanese call it Takeshima. So I'm been upset. So I sent the email, this is wrong, Shobo Japan is wrong, Takeshima is wrong, it's Tokto and it's the shit. To bring about change, Vank began to send letters to foreign media outlets and foreign governments asking that they change their textbooks and maps. Korean singer Kim Jang-hun, who is a member of Vank, expressed his thoughts on improving Korea's brand image. 
Although I am a singer, I founded a website called truthoftokto.com and also an application. We shouldn't fight with foreigners about Tokto, but prove it in a logical way by showing them evidence. The exhibition runs through February 25th at the National Museum of Korea, aiming to spread the idea that all Koreans are ambassadors representing their nation. Kwon so Arirang News. The first group of survivors from the Egypt bus bombing arrived back in Korea on Wednesday, extremely tired and emotional. Three members of their tour group and the Egyptian bus driver were killed Sunday when a suicide bomber blew up their bus near the Egypt-Israel border. Kim Hyun bin reports. Four days after the horrifying attack on their tour bus, the first group of Korean tourists arrived back on home soil Wednesday. After their ill-fated trip to Egypt, Looking exhausted, the victims underwent medical checks upon their arrival to check on their physical health and state of mind. We did basic checkups. This included checking their body temperature and blood pressure. The first group were the lucky ones, only suffering scratches and bruises. The mental scars, however, will not go away so easily. I heard gunfire, so we crouched down, but smoke and fire started to break loose. After going through immigration, the group boarded a bus bound for Chincheon, their hometown in Korea's central Chungcheongbuk-do province. The remainder of the group is due to arrive home on this Thursday. The families of the three Koreans who were killed are currently in Egypt and will be accompanying their bodies home soon. In the wake of the attack, the Korean government has issued a travel warning for the Sinai Peninsula and is working to find out whether there are still Korean tourists in the region. The tour group's bus was traveling from St. Catherine's Monastery, a popular tourist destination in the South Sinai, to Israel when it was attacked last Sunday. An Al-Qaeda-inspired terrorist group in the region claimed responsibility for the attack and has since warned all tourists to leave the area or risk further attacks. Kim Ha-bin, Leda News. Police have summoned at least 30 people for questioning as they continue their investigation into the collapse of an auditorium in the southeastern city of Gyeongju that killed 10 people and injured more than 100 others. According to the investigation, no snow had been cleared from the rooftop of the collapsed structure in the week prior to the accident, despite the heavy snowfall, and none of the 10 guards were on duty at the time. Investigators are also looking into whether the structure was built in accordance with industrial standards and safety regulations and whether regular inspections were in fact carried out. If the resort managers or event operators are found to be at fault, police say they could be charged with involuntary manslaughter. Yet another Korean tourist has been murdered abroad, this time in the Philippines. The Korean embassy in Manila said Wednesday that a 65-year-old man, identified only by his surname Ho, was shot several times Tuesday by two gunmen riding a motorcycle in Angeles City. Officials say Ha was on his way to his hotel at the time with three friends who managed to escape unharmed. Local authorities have opened an investigation into the case, but they don't yet have any suspects or even a motive. Uh, the Korean embassy says there have been several cases in recent months where Koreans residing in the Philippines have been kidnapped or killed, but this is the first murder. Ukraine's president has announced a truce with the opposition after violent clashes with riot police killed at least 26 people. A statement on Viktor Yanukovych's website says after meeting with the three main opposition leaders Wednesday, both sides declared a truce and vowed to start talks aimed at ending the bloodshed and stabilizing the situation there. The U.S. had earlier urged the Ukrainian government to remove riot police from the main square in Kiev and agree a truce. Also Wednesday, European Union leaders said they were urgently preparing targeted sanctions such as asset freezes and visa bans against officials responsible for the bloody crackdown. The unrest began in November last year when Yanukovych agreed with Russian calls to pull out of a planned trade agreement with the EU. The wait is over as we finally got a chance to watch Kim Hyun Ah compete in the women's figure skating event in Sochi. And she didn't disappoint as she delivered what Michelle Kwan described as 
breathtaking. And as the figure queen performed in her last Olympic short program of her illustrious career, she scores a season best 74.92, good for first overall. And despite it being lower than her Vancouver score of 78.50, her performance left many experts speechless as she hopes to claim her second straight gold on day 13. Meanwhile, Park so finished with 49.14 and Kim Ajin finished with a final score of 54.37. And staying with the women's figure skating event, while Kim Yana shined on ice, all eyes were on Yulia Nimnishkaya of Russia and Mao Sada of Japan once the figure queen's performance was over. And despite it being considered Kim Yana's biggest threat, Nimnishkaya falls in one of her jumps and was deducted a point. And with that, the final score of 65.23 was far lower than her team figure skating result as she finishes fifth overall. And as for Mao Sada going very last in the event, she falls in one of her jumps once again as she scores just 55.51 in her short program, good for 16th overall. Meanwhile, it was another Russian skater who came neck and neck with Kim Yana as Adelina Sonikova scores 74.64, just short of Kim Yana's final score. And while women's figure skating consists of some of the youngest Olympians, one Olympian proved that age doesn't matter when it comes to the Olympics as Ole Aina Bjorndalen became the most decorated winter Olympian of all time. And now after helping Norway win the first Olympic mixed relay in biathlon, he won his 13th medal at the Winter Games, becoming the most decorated winter Olympian of all time. The 40-year-old has now won eight gold medals, four silvers and a bronze and has a shot at another medal on Saturday. And speaking of making history, U.S. bobsledder Lauren Williams made history on day 12 after becoming the fifth athlete to win both the Summer and Winter Games medal. After winning a gold medal with the U.S. track relay team in London, Williams competes in the two-man bobsleigh event and wins a silver medal for Team USA as she becomes just the fifth athlete to win both the Summer and Winter Games medals. And finally, taking a look at the medal count so far after 12 days of competition in Sochi. Of course, if we take a look at here, we have a new first place here. Norway in first place now after adding another gold medal for a total of nine. Germany still with eight gold medals in second with the U.S. in third, followed by Russia and the Netherlands. Meanwhile, Korea drops down to 16th overall with two gold, one silver, and one bronze medal. And that's going to wrap it up for me. This has been SJ. Have a great rest of the day and see you guys again for your sports needs. Okay, now it's time to check on the weather conditions in Korea and around the world.
And that's all for now. Thanks ever so much for joining us. We'll be back at noon Korea time for all the latest on the family reunions taking place up there in uh, North Korea's Mount Gumgang Resort. But you can always catch up with what's been happening also on our website, which can be found at arirang.co.kr forward slash news. Thank you.